What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. You know, um, before I get started, hey, uh, you are invited to uh, subscribe to this channel. um, And if you feel inclined to do so, you can like your favorite videos. But today I'm going to be talking about more of a practical uh, ways to uh, be ready instantly for the rapture. And I think I'm focusing specifically on rewards. So um, where this comes from is really just, you know, sometimes we don't necessarily know when uh, we're capable of doing something, whether that be, you know, volunteering our time or, um, you know, changing something in our life. And so um, there are some things that we can do instantly to be ready for the rapture, even if it was tonight. You know, this is from a standpoint of, you know, let's say there it's, you know, four o'clock my time when I'm making this video. And let's say the rapture happens at eight o'clock, you know, p.m. Well, there are some things that you can do today, you know, and I think this is practical because. You know, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. And so I think the obvious, the big obvious one is to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, right? But I'm going to be talking about some more uh, practical, you know, uh, advanced, I guess, for lack of a better word, things that you can do. But, you know, for an unbeliever, you know, the best thing that that person can do is to, you know, receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, You know, that's the best thing that you can do, you know, even if the rapture was at, you know, later tonight, you know, um, before you can do any good works, you know, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this really, this concept really comes from um, when Jesus was on the cross and there was a thief on the cross with him and uh, the thief on the cross all he could do was really change his mindset towards Jesus Christ and also towards being a thief. You know, at one point, this thief reviled Jesus. You know, he didn't like Jesus. And, you know, he was saying, you know, hey, you know, get off the cross and save yourself and save us. You know, at least that was what one of the thieves were saying. But both the scripture describes both thieves on the cross next to Jesus reviling him reviling just means you know basically disliking him and saying uh hurtful harmful things and so the thief couldn't you know get baptized or you know uh give to the poor or anything like that you know he couldn't you know make amends with people that he hurt you know he couldn't really do too much but you know say to jesus those simple words of remember me when you come into your kingdom you know that's all he could say you know and jesus you know the grace of god is so amazing that you know even that show of repentance was enough to get him into the kingdom of god and to change his eternal destiny and to receive eternal life. And so, um, but, you know, going back to the concept of, you know, if the rapture was today, I think that one of the easiest things that you can do, let's say if you have $5, $10 um, in your account, I think one of the easiest things to do to, um, one, get on the path of multiplying your resources and also um, to get rewarded in heaven is to go to a charity website and give five dollars or ten dollars give what you can some of the websites have like a five dollar minimum or you know a one dollar minimum or a dollar fifty or two dollar minimum some whatever the minimum they have, you know, depending on the website, I would say that is something that you can do instantly that, you know, um, outside of putting your faith in Jesus Christ, you are going to get rewarded for that. 
you know, and so I would say the first thing that I would suggest to um, instantly be rewarded is uh, if the rapture were to happen tonight, you know, you can um, give what you have on a website instantly by going to that website address, you know, and um, I would not necessarily even be talking about my own website. I would be really, you know, um, talking about something like World Vision or um, Charity Water or, you know, some organization that, you know, is utilizing their funds to help those in need, you know, um, like, uh, you know, maybe your local homeless shelter that's in your city, you know, or in another city, you know, going to their website and you can instantly give to their program. And I think that will be something that you can do to help and get rewarded for. I think, you know, let's say if the rapture was tonight and you're listening to this, you know, you can go by a homeless person in the street. You can go by them and give them something. You can, if you have uh, a extra Bible, you can give them a Bible. Um, you can give them money or food or clothing. And I would say you that is one of the easiest things that you can instantly, almost instantly. Um, this this one is not necessarily as instant as a website donation, but um, you know, driving home, you can, um, you know, stop and get food for someone and just hand it to them. Um, someone who may be, you know, homeless or something. Um, that would, I think, be one of an almost instant thing that you can do to get rewarded in heaven. And also, um, you know, um, receive other blessings from just uh helping those in need and so you know this concept comes from just the bible describes uh when we stand before god we will give an account of our life you know and he's going to try our works by fire where you know the fire is i believe representative of God, you know, looking and examining your life and really analyzing how you handled situation situations, how you handled your resources, um, you know, how you spent your time, what you did in your free time, um, and different things like that, you know, whether you turned away from sin uh, or not. Which leads me up to another instant thing that you can do is to pray against your sin. I would say that is another number three instant thing that you can do is, you know, which you're probably already doing. But something I think is worth doing because let's say, you know, the rapture is tonight where, you know, that person has committed a sin and hasn't necessarily turned from their sins. You know, if the next day came, you know, they would either be looking to do that sin again or maybe they were, uh, you know, just not preparing to fight against that sin. And so I would say number three, the one thing that you can do instantly is to pray against your sin and you can even you know if you have um maybe twenty dollars um you can even do a trial period of a porn blocker you know if porn is your issue you can put up a porn blocker on your devices and i would say going to a website that offers that service that is something that you can do instantly Another thing, depending on the sin, um, you can, you know, uh, throw away 
those things that are, uh, you know, causing you to fall. Maybe it is um, some sort of uh, smoking pipe where you smoke marijuana out of it or you smoke something worse, drugs. You can throw away the alcohol bottles. You know, those are some things that you can do today. Not, not that, you know, if the rapture didn't happen, that, you know, your struggle wouldn't continue the next day. But, you know, it's something that you can do today is instantly you can throw away the alcohol, throw away the, uh, you know, marijuana, throw away the drugs and, you know, throw away that number of that person that you call to hook up with or something. You know, whatever the sin is, I'm just trying to throw out examples um, of something that, you know, you can do today. And so, um, you know, Jesus, he described his coming as a thief in the night. And so, you know, I think that, you know, it's good to prepare. You know, I think that we should, you know, make efforts to do things that might take a while, you know, um, whether that be going to school or finishing a book, maybe you haven't finished the Bible, you know, and it will take you, you know, there's some reading plans that take even a year or, you know, I heard that it takes about 72 hours to read the Bible straight, you know, so even then, you know, reading the whole entire Bible you're not going to probably do in one day. Um, and so, um, those are some things, those are some ideas where, you know, Jesus was describing, like I was saying, a coming as a thief in the night where it's unexpectedly to those people that, you know, are not really ready or not really watching for him. And so, um, when he comes, you know, the rapture is, you know, something that you have to already be prepared for. Um, you know, I was going to say that you have to already kind of send in your reservation. You know, I love the example of a rev- reservation and I, I can give a little bit of a short story that goes along with this. But when you make a reservation for a party, you know, you, you send out RSVP, um, you know, uh, little tokens or, uh, a card or some sort that you say, you know, Hey, send back your name or send back your response that you are either going to attend or you have other plans. And so God describes, heaven and salvation in that way where you have to RSVP so to speak you have to send in your reservation you have to send in your response and that's another kind of way of putting believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is responding to Jesus Christ you know and you're either you know saying no I don't want Jesus I don't want to come or yes, Jesus, you know, I choose you, Jesus. And it's really him choosing us, but you know, you're responding to his choice. Um, and so a little story that I have is, um, you know, I heard of a story that I don't know how true it is, but this singer, and you may have heard this story before, but a singer, uh, performed at this wedding. It was this very extravagant wedding, And, um, you know, she sang and, uh, performed for the couple that was getting married and the wedding took place at, um, uh, apparently the Columbia tower in Seattle, Washington. And it was this, uh, super nice wedding on the top floor. And, and so after she performed, you know, the wedding, uh, ceremony took place and then the wedding feast or you know the dinner after the wedding was going to take place and so this singer 
um, you know, performed and now she went to go to eat the dinner. But um, how they had the dinner set up is, you know, they had this waiter who had all these names of people who had uh, written down and told the wedding couple the married couple that they were going to attend the dinner and so this singer went up to the waiter and she's like you know hey um i'm looking to get into this dinner and so the waiter said okay well let me look for your name and so uh he looked and looked and he said you know hey i don't see your name here on this uh on this list and so she's like, well, there, there must be some mistake. You know, I'm the singer. I performed here at this at this wedding. And the waiter said, OK, look, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from or who you are. You know, you have to be here written on this list to be set into the dinner, to be sit, sitting at the dinner. And so um, the waiter ended up taking the singer who performed at the wedding and leading him through the the dinner to the service elevator. And as they were walking to the service elevator, the singer got to see what was going to be served at the dinner. And it was all these beautiful uh, uh, setup and um, these delicious foods. And it was just such a beautiful event. It was like a once in a lifetime event event and the singer got let down in the service elevator to the garage and so when they went finally you know went back to their car her husband asked hey what happened you know and the singer said well I got so busy and I got so you know uh busy that I forgot to RSVP and she's like well I just assumed that I was going to you know be allowed into the dinner because hey I sang I was the main performance at the wedding and so she said to herself now I know what heaven is going to be like because you know there's going to be so many people that expect to be on the list of God the in the book of life but they did not RSVP and so that's the story you know I thought that was a good story when I first heard it and I think it has some real uh, revelation in it that you know um, we can't only just busy ourselves and not attend to the things of God, you know, and not attend to God's will for our life, but yet we fall back on our own will. And, you know, we forget to really, uh, you know, have that saving faith. And I think, you know, it's a story to show that what does it mean to RSVP? RSVP, I believe, is, you know, having a saving faith where you are not only saying hey, I believe in Jesus Christ, but it's also changing how you live. But it's coupled with your faith. It's coupled with faith. I believe it's James uh, chapter 2, verse 25, that says that we're not justified by faith only, but also justified by works. And so, um, you know, justified means that we are given right standing with God that um, God is making us his righteousness and he's giving us his righteousness and we are made right with God and we are in a correct relationship with God and that God has made things right in our account and so Um, You know, let's say if you were to have an account full of all your sins, all your transactions, so to speak, you know, and all your sins and all your good purchases and bad purchases. Well, God justification can kind of be explained how God 
you know, goes through your account and takes away all the bad purchases, all the sins, and he leaves you with a good account. And, um, you know, that's a little bit about what justification is. And so, um, you know, it's important for us to realize that, you know, hey, if the rapture, rapture happened tonight, you know, do we have our RSVP? Are there things that we can do today? And are we living as if, you know, okay, if I'm really thinking if Jesus could come back today, you know, would I be ready? Would I be prepared? And, you know, I have many videos about how to prepare And I think one challenge for us as Christians is to really, you know, apply the word of God to our life, you know, and, um, you know, to really just uh, live out the Bible. You know, Jesus is one that said, you know, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And so he is encouraging us to say, you know, whoever does the commandments and teaches them will be called great. We'll we'll have a good place in the kingdom of heaven. And so we are to do God's commandments. We're not only to just stop at faith where, you know, there's a whole movement. There's a whole Christian movement out there that says, hey, just have faith. You know, you don't need to be baptized. You don't need to necessarily keep the commandments. You know, the commandment is faith. You know, they try to say, you know, there's no commandments, but, you know, faith. They try to say that, you know, there's only believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is part of it is to believe, right? But the belief is is kind of like, you know, a branch that it branches. It's a the belief is a tree, you know, but it branches off into other things that we are to do that, you know, um, Jesus said, Hey, if you abide in me, you know, you will bear much fruit. And so we have to listen to the whole counsel of God and not just picking and choosing, you know, things that we want to listen to and don't want to listen to. And, you know, um, scripture says in timothy all scripture is useful and is 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 good for instruction in righteousness and and so we have the whole word of god to draw from it's not just you know okay we're in the new testament now and so i only read the new testament you know we're given a whole bible where you know we have a whole bunch of scriptures we have Moses and the prophets you know and uh, Moses and the prophets are to lead someone to Jesus Christ but once you come to Jesus Christ it's not like okay now I can throw away the whole Bible like I don't need it anymore no you know Jesus said that you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free and so um, hopefully this podcast was helpful to someone you know i just thought of you know things that we can do instantly to be ready for the rapture tonight i think you know the one of the easiest things is you know to get on that path of repentance towards our sin you know even though there's you know it's said that we won't necessarily reach perfection in this life But, you know, I believe that there is a level of, you know, completeness that we are to reach where, you know, you you are growing in the things of God. And, you know, I believe that the type of Christian that I was in high school, you know, was not correct, you know, and, you know, we have to grow towards you know a better walk with God and not just being complacent in you know what we have 
always known, you know, and, you know, I was going to church, you know, I was going to Bible study, and yeah, today, you know, I can feel pretty good about that, but at the same time, you know, it's like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't really growing, you know, even though technically, you know, I did grow, you know, and I'm, I'm sure it was helpful, the things that I was, you know, God was allowing, God was allowing me to do, but, you know, I needed to grow, you know, and I'm sure there's, you know, millions of Christians out there who are like that and billions of people that need to come to Jesus Christ. And so, um, these are some things that we can do instantly. And so, uh, you know, thanks so much. And I will talk to you on the next podcast. See ya.